Today's Monday, May 21st, 2007. Take zero. Yes, it's true. I let her go and I didn't mean to. She was a cow. Hi, I'm Sean Duran. And I'm Peter Men. And this is episode three of Take Zero. For me, school just ended. So, I don't know, I guess I'll spend more time with Sean here, making more episodes. Hopefully we'll be doing a bi-weekly video cast soon. We'll start that up regularly. We're still adding all the polish to them, trying to make them look good, trying to improve on ourselves and our information presentation, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What have you been up to? Nothing. <laughs> it's one o'clock in the morning. Wow. Today was kind of a tiring day. I woke up at seven o'clock, clocked into an eight hour shift. Afterwards, my cousin had a graduation dinner at the Panda Inn. Just had to drive about an hour and 20 minutes. And then now I'm here in Sean's garage, filming this at one o'clock at night, so I'm pretty tired. Sean here. What have you been doing all day? I've been playing Command and Conquer 3. How do you like that? It's pretty, pretty fun. So how do you feel about StarCraft 2? I can't really get excited over it. I don't really care much for StarCraft. I know StarCraft, the first one, was really well balanced and everything but it's too much like a game of chess when all I wanted to do was yeah that's, that's that's why it was so great that's why I love it well I wanted to play checkers I don't want chess you ever play chess? no <laughs> uh, today's topic is lighting lighting is one of the main things that will make your movie look professional or cheap and lighting is probably the one of the most important technical aspects in the production process. As in, whenever I watch a movie, their lighting was good if I don't notice it. If I notice it, then my judgment is that their lighting was bad. Because lighting, obviously depending on the style, uh, is generally mimicking usually daylight or the lighting of the scene, which involves furniture and props, and if that illusion is pulled off well, then I'm convinced to the point of not even thinking about it. And that's partly the point of lighting, other than making everything look good. Because I'm a <clears throat> photographer, that's one of the biggest things that you can mess around with in photography is lighting, so... Yeah. Um. My professor said, you know, you can spend so many years in photography or cinematography and you still would not know everything there is to know about lighting. It's something you have to, it takes a lot of practice and you just have to play around with it and you just have to make it fun. Yeah. Otherwise it's just really tedious and you'll hate it. Yeah, yeah. In general it's also considered to be the, the hardest and most complicated uh, process during any shoot versus, you know, cinematography and maybe even acting. I don't know about directing. I like lighting, it's fun. Yeah, it is fun, kind of. Tedious, tedious fun. But didn't we spend one night, <laughs> Sean and I spent 11 hours getting the light to look perfect. We stayed up the entire night. That was our very first time lighting a scene and we learned a lot. Not to say we're professionals now, but even within those 11 hours, we probably didn't even learn a fraction of what professional uh, lighting cinematographers know. Now me, I prefer in movies, in my movies, to have hard lighting. I've always liked that sort of hard, realistic, crisp lighting natural sunlight and I love bloom though I like bloom and I like glitter I like overexposure um, Peter's gonna talk about the differences between 
lighting you can buy at a hardware store and professional studio lighting that costs hundreds if not thousands of dollars more. And Sean will be talking about the difference between hard light and soft light. And Peter's gonna go first. Okay. Okay, in this segment we're gonna talk about the difference between hardware lights and studio lights. And I'd just like to say that with my small experience, there's not too big a difference between lights that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's versus professional studio lights that you can buy online or at studio sites, place like that. And the difference between them is really color temperature. You can always color balance in post, especially with digital cameras these days, it's a lot easier. And the second thing is that studio lights can come with soft boxes and, and they also come with power packs. So you can always adjust the brightness. You can also reposition the lamps facing any direction. You can have the soft boxes to fuse the actor, the scene, or you can take them off and just have hard lighting. Whereas with hardware lights, the only way you can do that is through improvising or inventing your own little techniques such as say by using foam core or foam board and bouncing the hardware light against the foam core bouncing it onto your scene that way or just having some sort of fabric like silk silk screen and laying it over the hardware light and you've got a diffuse scene now the third uh, difference and similarity the two share is studio lights are generally harder to set up. They require a lot of assembly, a lot of disassembly, and of course you gotta sort of be careful with them. They burn really hot, they heat up the room, you have to touch it with your finger and you get your oils on the bulb. That oil can bubble up on the bulb and eventually cause the bulb to burst. Now with hardware lights, they're sort of made to be beaten up, especially the ones at Home Depot or Lowe's. They have their own little exoskeleton where you can kind of do anything with the lights. The bulbs themselves are very thick and heavy duty. They can withstand a lot of damage without ever going out. Studio lights are generally like that. They, they're very frail, they're very sensitive, but at the same time, that's why they're so manageable. But, of course, it all gets to the point where studio lights are very expensive. You can spend a couple hundred dollars on just for, say, two soft boxes. Whereas with hardware lights, you can buy the more lights for even less money and sort of invent your own little contraption to encase them in. Plus, we found out that using hardware lights, it, it's actually very easy to use them. And with hardware lights, there's the added simplicity. But if you have studio lights and you know how to use them, they're not too complicated for you, then you know, more power to you. You're just starting out, you know, there's no problem with using simple hardware lights. Cheaper, faster, and in general, uh, withstand the damage. In the lighting world, there's only two types of light. There is direct lighting and there's indirect light. And direct light is a lot like going outside on a sunny day and if you notice the shadows, all of them are really hard. Whereas on a cloudy day, you'll notice that the shadows are what's called diffused, which, mean that, which means that the sunlight is passing through clouds and the light is being separated. This would be an example of direct light. You can see it's a lot like a sunny day where the shadows are really hard. And this will be an example of indirect lighting. Now technically this isn't indirect lighting because the light is coming directly at me, but it's it's passing through something. So that means that the light is being diffused. If light passes through something or reflects off something, it separates the light. 
So like on a cloudy day, the light passes through the clouds and causes the shadows to be a lot softer versus a sunny day. This is, this is both. And this is darkness. Okay, so is that it? That's it. That concludes our segment. And we'd appreciate it if you take a look at our podcast listener survey, which is located on our homepage on the sidebar to the right. We'll put a link in the show notes, okay. too. And Finn. Finn. Photoshop is just as much a tool. It is as much a tool, but it cancels out this trade crafts that cannot be bought any other place else. This knowledge of the old world, the classical age. It's like if uh, you know Pablo Picasso painted in Photoshop. Yeah, you get his vision, but you don't get his technique. That's the difference. There's still technique to painting in Photoshop. There is, but it's a different kind of technique. And why just because it's a different kind makes it worse or not Because he's admirable. not doing it by hand. Why does he's doing it? Yeah, sure he is. He actually takes hold of the mouse. Now and... you're being very, very abstract, okay? I mean painting. With like, paint. Like Andres. Mixing paint on a canvas. Andres, he paints digitally. He only paints digitally. Why is that any less than... He, he can make a huge statement with his images he creates in Photoshop. Then he has great vision, but I can't admire his technique. Other than that, as a digital artist. It takes a, a lot of skill to be able to paint in Photoshop like that. Same for a painter. So why is that any less admirable? Because a painter, they're doing it by hand. Why is by hand more admirable than digitally, which is still by hand, like you're taking a mouse and... Because it's like tailoring a suit by a machine versus by hand. Why do people pay more for a suit that's tailored by hand than by a machine? Why do people want to buy things that are handcrafted when they could have just as easily been made by a machine? Well, you see, a machine Go on. is completely a machine. Something in Photoshop, there's actually a user interface where the person is actually controlling that. It's that user interface that negates a canvas and a paintbrush. It's as simple as that. You can't, if you want to dig any deeper into that, you might as well. paintbrush is your mouse. The canvas is your screen. You're being very, it's very. It's exactly the same thing. That requires a lot of abstract thought, Sean. To me, that's exactly Hellboy. the same thing. There's some of us in this world that like to be pure. We don't want to become, in the words of Howard Beale, we do not want to become one of your humanoids. 